A mini-computer, or colloquially mini, is a class of smaller computers that was developed in the mid-1960s and sold for much less than mainframe and midsize computers from IBM and its direct competitors. In a 1970 survey, the New York Times suggested a consensus definition of a minicomputer as a machine costing less than $25,000 equivalent to $158,000 in 2017, with an input-output device such as a teleprinter and at least 4,000 words of memory, that is capable of running programs in a higher-level language, such as Fortran or BASIC. The class formed a distinct group with its own software architectures and operating systems. Minis were designed for control, instrumentation, human interaction, and communication switching as distinct from calculation and record keeping. Many were sold indirectly to original equipment manufacturers OEMs for final end-use application. During the two-decade lifetime of the mini-computer class 1965 to 1985, almost 100 companies formed and only a half-dozen remained, when single-chip CPU microprocessors appeared, beginning with the Intel 4004 in 1971, the term, mini-computer came to mean a machine that lies in the middle range of the computing spectrum, in between the smallest mainframe computers and the microcomputers. The term Mini computer is little used today. The contemporary term for this class of system is mid range computer, such as the higher end Spark, Power Architecture, and Itanium based systems from Oracle, IBM, and Hewlett Packard. History The term mini computer developed in the 1960s to describe the smaller computers that became possible with the use of transistors and core memory technologies, minimal instructions sets and less expensive peripherals such as the ubiquitous teletype Model 33 ASR. They usually took up one or a few 19-inch rack cabinets, compared with the large mainframes that could fill a room. Topic. 1960s, the first minicomputers arrive The definition of minicomputer is vague with the consequence that there are a number of candidates for the first minicomputer. An early and highly successful minicomputer was Digital Equipment Corporation's 12-bit PDP-8, which was built using discrete transistors and cost from $16,000 upwards when launched in 1964. Later versions of the PDP-8 took advantage of small-scale integrated circuits. The important precursors of the PDP-8 include the PDP-5, Link, the TX-0, the TX-2, and the PDP-1. DEC gave rise to a number of minicomputer companies along Massachusetts Route 128, including Data General, Wang Laboratories, Apollo Computer, and Prime Computer. Mini computers were also known as mid range computers. They grew to have relatively high processing power and capacity. They were used in manufacturing process control, telephone switching, and to control laboratory equipment. In the 1970s, they were the hardware that was used to launch the computer aided design industry and other similar industries where a smaller dedicated system was needed. The 7400 series of TTL integrated circuits started appearing in minicomputers in the late 1960s. The 74181 arithmetic logic unit ALU was commonly used in the CPU data paths. Each 74181 had a bus width of 4 bits, hence the popularity of bit slice architecture. Some scientific computers, such as the Nikolay 1080, would use the 7400 series in groups of five ICs parallel for their uncommon 20 bits architecture. The 7400 series offered data selectors, multiplexers, three state buffers, memories, etc. in dual inline packages with one tenth inch spacing, making major system components and architecture evident to the naked eye. Starting in the 1980s, many minicomputers used VLSI circuits. 
At the launch of the MITS Altair 8800 in 1975, Radio Electronics magazine referred to the system as a mini-computer. Although the term microcomputer soon became usual for personal computers based on single-chip microprocessors. At the time, microcomputers were 8-bit single-user, relatively simple machines running simple program launcher operating systems like CP, M or MS-DOS, while minis were much more powerful systems that ran full multi-user, multitasking operating systems, such as VMS and Unix, and although the classical mini was a 16-bit computer, the emerging higher-performance superminis were 32-bit. Mid-1980s, 1990s, the minis give way to the micros The decline of the minis happened due to the lower cost of microprocessor-based hardware, the emergence of inexpensive and easily deployable local area network systems, the emergence of the 68,020, 80,286 and the 80,386 microprocessors, and the desire of end-users to be less reliant on inflexible mini-computer manufacturers and IT departments or data centers. The result was that mini computers and computer terminals were replaced by networked workstations, file servers and PCs in some installations, beginning in the latter half of the 1980s. During the 1990s, the change from mini computers to inexpensive PC networks was cemented by the development of several versions of Unix and Unix like systems that ran on the Intel x86 microprocessor architecture, including Solaris, Linux, FreeBSD, NetBSD, and OpenBSD. Also, the Microsoft Windows series of operating systems, beginning with Windows NT, now included server versions that supported preemptive multitasking and other features required for servers. As microprocessors have become more powerful, the CPUs built up from multiple components, once the distinguishing feature differentiating mainframes and mid-range systems from microcomputers, have become increasingly obsolete, even in the largest mainframe computers. Digital Equipment Corporation DEC was once the leading mini-computer manufacturer, at one time the second largest computer company after IBM. But as the mini-computer declined in the face of generic Unix servers and Intel-based PCs, not only DEC, but almost every other mini-computer company including Data General, Prime, ComputerVision, Honeywell and Wang Laboratories, many based in New England hence the end of the Massachusetts miracle, also collapsed or merged. DEC was sold to Compaq in 1998, while Data General was acquired by EMC Corporation. Today only a few proprietary mini-computer architectures survive. The IBM System, 38 operating system, which introduced many advanced concepts, lives on with IBM's AS-400, realizing the importance of the myriad lines of legacy code programs written, AS stands for application system. Great efforts were made by IBM to enable programs originally written for the System 34 and System 36 to be moved to the AS 400. The AS 400 was replaced by the ISRIES, which was subsequently replaced by the System I. In 2008, the System I was replaced by the IBM Power Systems. By contrast, competing proprietary computing architectures from the early 1980s, such as DEC's VAX, Wang VS and Hewlett-Packard's HP 3000 have long been discontinued without a compatible upgrade path. OpenEVMs runs HP Alpha and Intel IA64 Itanium CPU architectures. Tandem Computers, which specialized in reliable large-scale computing, was acquired by Compaq, and a few years afterward the combined entity merged with Hewlett-Packard. The NSK-based non-stop product line was reported from MIPS processors to Itanium-based processors branded as HP Integrity Non-Stop Servers. As in the earlier migration from stack machines to MIPS microprocessors, all customer software was carried forward without source changes. Integrity Non-Stop continues to be HP's answer for the extreme scaling needs of its very largest customers. 
The NSK operating system, now termed Non-Stop OS, continues as the base software environment for the Non-Stop servers, and has been extended to include support for Java and integration with popular development tools like Visual Studio and Eclipse. Topic: The mini computers' industrial impact and heritage. A variety of companies emerged that built turnkey systems around mini computers with specialized software and, in many cases, custom peripherals that addressed specialized problems such as computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, process control, manufacturing resource planning, and so on. Many if not most mini-computers were sold through these original equipment manufacturers and value-added resellers. Several pioneering computer companies first built mini-computers, such as DEC, Data General, and Hewlett-Packard who now refers to its HP 3000 mini-computers as servers, rather than mini-computers. And although today's PCs and servers are clearly microcomputers physically, architecturally their CPUs and operating systems have developed largely by integrating features from mini-computers. In a software context, the relatively simple OSs for early microcomputers were usually inspired by mini-computer OSs, such as CP.M's similarity to Digital's single-user OS, 8 and RT11 and multi-user RSTS time-sharing system. Also, the multi-user OSs of today are often either inspired by, or directly descended from, mini-computer OSs. Unix was originally a mini-computer OS, while Windows NT kernel—the foundation for all current versions of Microsoft Windows borrowed design ideas liberally from VMS. Many of the first generation of PC programmers were educated on mini-computer systems. Topic. List of some notable mini-computers Control Data's CDC-160A and CDC-1700 DEC PDP and VAX Series Data General Nova Hewlett-Packard HP 3000 Series and HP 2100 Series Honeywell Bull DPS-6, DPS-6000 series IBM mid-range computers Interdata 7 30 seconds and 8 30 seconds Varian 620100 series Norsk Data Nord 1, Nord 10, and Nord 100 Prime Computer Prime 50 series SDS-SDS-92 Cell, one of the first 32-bit real-time computer system manufacturers. Texas Instruments TI-990 Wang Laboratories 2200 and VS Series K202, first Polish mini-computer See also The Soul of a New Machine, about the development of Data General's Eclipse per megavolt minicomputers in the early 1980s Charles Babbage Institute History of Computing Hardware 1960s-present Supermini Computer <laughs>